Hey guys, Luke here. Another round of Adderall done. Round four, over and done with. What a great round it was. Now, I've got to say, WrestleMania's on today, so I'm going to be watching that, and I'll be probably pretty tanked by the end of the day. So by the time I go to edit this video, there's a good chance I'm pretty drunk. So if the editing shit in this video, that explains it. Now that I've got that out of the way, let's talk about some footy. On Thursday night, we had the Roosters taking on the Broncos, and I thought this was going to be a really, really close game. Now, I believe in my pre-match prediction tips video, I said this could be game of the round. I think I did say it was definitely going to be game of the round. Definitely wasn't the case. Uh, the Roosters just put a pounding on the Broncos. Broncos were absolutely awful. I think everybody can see it. The, something's just wrong with the Broncos. I don't, can't even pinpoint exactly what it is. The, obviously, their halves are not good. Darius Boy's not playing good. McAuliffe's doesn't really do much. But, I mean, the forwards haven't been effective. Apart from that Cowboys game where Penguin Jr. went off, they haven't really done much as a whole. Just... Their whole team is just not working. Apart from maybe like Jack Bird and Corey Oates. Like Asako's been so off. It's just, it's very weird to watch. Because you know the Broncos have a lot of talent. But they're just not putting it together. The Roosters on the other hand were absolutely phenomenal last night. Oh, not last night. But the other day. Uh, going into the game, I thought they hadn't been that good this season. But they finally put in an 80 minute performance. And it was really, really scary to see. The Roosters are a very, very good side. And that wasn't even their full strength side. Considering Jake Friend didn't play. But yeah, the Roosters just way too good. On Friday night, we saw the New Zealand Warriors take on the Gold Coast Titans. Now, I've got to admit, I didn't see this game, but by the looks of things, the Warriors just dominated. It just seemed like same old Titans. Titans, even though they had Ash Taylor and Tyrone Roberts, just produced the same old Titans performance they've done all season so far. The Warriors, so hot and cold this time, they were hot by the looks of things. Roger Tuivasa-Shek, I saw some of the highlights. He looked very, very good. Um, the new halfback looked pretty good as well. But yeah, you kind of forget how good Roger Tuivasa-Shek is. We, we saw him at the Roosters. We knew he was a good player. It goes across to the Warriors, and you don't see the Warriors every week on, like, normal free-to-air or anything, and they don't really talk about them in the papers too much and that, so you kind of f sort of forget about some of the Warriors players, but Tuivasa Shek is outstanding. There's a reason he won the Dalio medal last year, and he's just he's just so bloody good. But, um, yeah, the Warriors looking like they're finding a little bit of form, but it's so hard to say with the Warriors. Like, they, they'll put together a win here against the Titans, absolutely flog them, easy win, and then next week they'll go out and get flogged themselves. They're so hot and cold, you can't get a read on them, but... What can I say about this? It's just, you know, a good performance from the Warriors, bad performance from the Titans. The second game of Friday night, I didn't see all of this game either because I had to work, but apparently this was a really, really boring game. Now, I saw some of the try. Josh Reynolds looked like he had a very, very good game, but the rest of the Tigers team just didn't really seem to do too much, in my opinion. Luke Brooks didn't really do anything. Farrah didn't really do anything. Same can be said for the Panthers as well. Like, there was only two tries in the whole game. Actually, sorry, three tries because Tigers didn't kick any of the goals, but, uh, and if they did, they would have won the game, but it took Panthers I think they scored in the 78th minute and you know they ended up getting pretty fortunate to win that game Tigers can consider themselves pretty unlucky but they're the sort of games you got to close out that's where Luke Brooks has got to step up where Josh Reynolds had to step up and even Moses and Boy he's done absolutely nothing there's a lot of big name well not big name players but a lot of players who need to step up for the Tigers and they're just not doing it at the moment meanwhile for the Panthers they're not playing well but they are getting some results which you know maybe that's a good thing maybe it's a bad thing I don't know is it just going to mask some of their problems possibly but this is where the good teams you know We've seen them with the Roosters, even though they're not playing considerably well, but they're still getting the job done. That's where Panthers, they're still getting some of the wins. So, I don't know, maybe they're just waiting for things to gel a little bit better. But, I mean, it's not like they're they're on a losing streak and, you know, trying to put things together at the end of the season. They're still getting wins, which is a positive sign for the Panthers. Now, on a sad day, the first game of Super Sad Day, we had the Manly Warringah Seagulls defeating the South Sydney Rabbitohs by one point, another Golden Pointer. Now, I've got to say, this one was a pretty good game. I actually missed Golden Point. I saw all the way up until Golden Point, and I had to go to work, and... Oh, I was, I was gutted, to be honest. I thought the Rabbitohs were going to win it and go on a point, but, you know, when Tom Trubovich went down, I thought, you know, Manly were playing very, very good up until that point, but they came out in the second half, Trubovich goes down, I thought, okay, they're done for. Like, Rabbitohs just going to run all over them. It didn't happen, though. Rabbitohs, I don't know, they, just, they were just off. They were just really off. Adam Reynolds didn't play very good. Walker didn't really do too much. Just, Johnson wasn't very good. They just, yeah, something was wrong about the Rabbitohs. I don't know if it's because they had such a good start to the season, a 3 0. When you come up to that fourth, fifth win in a row, teams sort of start to be a bit of a shell of themselves. They might still win, but they're definitely not going to be anywhere near as good as the first few times they won in a row. So, yeah, I don't know. A Brookvale crowd was very, very good. Uh, and so, Manly got out to such a good start that you knew there was definitely a possibility of an upset, but. 
I just didn't expect it to happen, but mainly they got the job done. Cherry Evans kicks the field goal. Upset of the round by far. Now into the second game of Super Saturday. The Canberra Raiders defeated North Queensland Cowboys with ease. It looked like an absolute flogging for the Raiders. Looked like they just did it in cruise control. The Cowboys, I don't know what's going on with the Cowboys. Well, I do. Their back line is just horrendous. But their four pack just isn't working. It's not doing what you thought they would do. I know Tom Malala's out, but realistically, they still have a, a four pack full of rep players and international players, and they're just not getting the job done. Now, uh, this was a good matchup for them. I think I said in the preview this would be a good test for them because the Raiders themselves have a very good forward pack. I thought the Cowboys bench might have sort of got it done for him, but the Raiders, they just turned up to play. Nicole Clodstad looks the goods at fullback. He looks very, very good. White and Swart is finding his feet in the halves as well. Hodgson doing what Hodgson does and just, yeah, the, the Englishmen in their side are really carrying them in my opinion. But Rapana as well looks to be back to his best. Their backs are sort of firing. Jared Croker looked like he had a good game based off the highlights I saw uh, as well as, um, you know, Kotrick and all that. It's just, you know, Raiders seem to be putting it together finally. Now, I, I tip them to be Wooden Spoon. That's looking to be like a very, very bad tip considering some of the other teams that are playing at the moment. But yeah, the Raiders, they're, they're playing pretty well. Now onto the third and final game of Super Sad Day. We had the Parramatta Eels defeating the Cronulla Sharks. Now the Sharks had Sean Johnson pull out in the warm-up, I'm pretty sure. He definitely didn't play. I'm pretty sure it was in the warm-up. And Parramatta just took full advantage of that, to be honest. Um, it wasn't like an amazing game by any means, but... Eels obviously did enough to win. Sharks at times I thought might have gone on to win it. Like they had a nice little uh, sort of trick shot set play from uh, from a penalty I think it was, or yeah, definitely a penalty. Um, but yeah, the, the Sharks they sort of disappointed a little bit, but they didn't really offer too much. Dugan at fullback would do a good run, then he'd stay down injured. But yeah, with the Eels, you know. Even though Dylan Brown didn't play, the Semen guy did pretty well. But um, that Reed Marnie, very, very good player. Um, the forward pack was, you know, making a lot of meters. But I think what's most impressive about the Eels side is, or maybe not even the Eels side, about Blake Ferguson, really, is the fact that you know you've got at least one or two tries just purely through Blake Ferguson. You know you can just pass him the ball and he's going to create something. Whether he scores it or he sets up someone else, you know he's going to do something good. So it's always a positive to have a player like him in your side. And I suppose they haven't had that sort of player since they had Semi and Raja. And we know how well the Eels did with Semi in the side. But yeah, the Eels, they're actually looking like the real deal this year. On to Sunday afternoon football. Now, I've got to admit, I wasn't expecting to be talking about this game how I am. Now, I thought the Melbourne Storm were going to absolutely destroy my Bulldogs. But I can happily sit here and say I'm very, very proud of the efforts of the Bulldogs. I think a lot of people will agree with this. The Bulldogs are quite unlucky to not win that game. Now, the Storm, you know, they're playing in Melbourne. It's always going to happen. You get a few sort of favorable decisions. But, you know, Storm showed their class. They came back. Once the Bulldogs got a little bit gassed, that's where the Storm took over. Um, Dylan Napper went down injured, which I did think was a big loss for the Bulldogs. He is your leader of the four pack, and losing him, losing him so early on definitely did... Um you know, didn't do us any favours, but a big effort from the boys. Lewis stood up, Cogga played pretty well, Nick Meany looks good at fullback, but still at the end of the day, the Storm got the job done. It wasn't by 13 plus, which I thought it was going to be, but at the end of the day, Storm still won, which is, it just says a lot about the Storm. They probably got outplayed and they still found a way to win. Now into the final game of the round. Now I only saw bits and pieces of this game because I got to admit, I was watching the Married at First Sight reunion. What a reunion, what an episode. Okay, it's a terrible show. But St. George pick up the victory in another golden point game. Once again, Corey Norman kicking the field goal. He's sort of coming a little bit of a clutch player, Corey Norman. Now going into the season, I didn't think Corey Norman was going to be that good for the Dragons. I thought he was a shit signing, but he seems to be going all right, especially in particular now that they've sort of worked out their, their spine. Dufty at the, at the back looked pretty good in the past that I saw Norman and Hunt in the halves doing all right. McInnes, obviously, McInnes is a very good player. But I think what's really... They have glimpses of brilliance. I mean, we saw Callum Ponga back at fullback. He threw a nice pass to Homer Hunt to score a try. But, you know, they just can't put together a full 80 performance. They can't even put together, like, a 40, 50-minute performance. It's like... I don't know, just waiting for the ball to drop with the knife, and it's just not happening. I don't know if that's Nathan Brown's fault, the player's fault, a combination. I really don't know who's to blame for this, but something is not right at the Knights. The Dragons, on the other hand, are doing much better than I thought they would, considering going into the season, the DeBellin stuff, I thought it was going to ruin them, to be honest. But, you know, they're fighting hard. That's what you want from your side. That's all you can ask from your side. Uh, you know, the team trying for 80 minutes. That's what I was saying with the Bulldogs. I was happy with that performance. They got beat, but, you know, you want them to be in the game for 80 minutes. That's what the Dragons seem to be able to do as well. Well, and the Dragons are actually managing to win the game. So, yeah, I think if you're a Dragons fan, 
you can look at their results this year and be pretty happy. Anyway, guys, that was just a quick wrap up of the 2019 Round 4 NRL season. Hopefully, you did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's on the screen right now. Also, go ahead and like my Facebook page as well. I've been posting a lot more on that. And while you're at it, you may as well go ahead and add me on Snapchat, Mr. Luke on YT. Right here, guys, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.